Hello, welcome pen friends. Um, this is kind of a special video where I'm gonna go over the four pens that I inked up initially for May 2021 and go over what I did to end up liking how they're writing. Um, I now have 16 pens inked up, but I really wanted to make sure I followed through on the four out of the initial ones that I showed you. Um, and of course, we're gonna do a, a report card but let's see in may i came on and i showed you the 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 eight pens and these four i had issues with so we'll talk about the little issues that i had and i'll show you what i used to to fix them and there may be a thing or two in here that might help somebody i hope so so um we'll move these three away and i'm, I'm sh showing you in the order that i worked with the pens because that'll help me also with my memory but i have uh, in my currently inked I also have my new notes on what I did and how it went and stuff so that'll help this is the Monteverde uh, MVP pocket pen it's it's my latest pen and I just love it it, it opens up and it it posts uh, screws to post and it's so cute it's a cartridge pen cartridge only but I'm still too chicken to uh, to go ahead and try to eyedropper it but I think that could happen you know I just need to get a little bit braver or not because I am going to carry it in my jeans pocket so I had one little mishap with a, a pilot petite one once and I I quit doing those like that and I just use the cartridge anyway um the problem I had with this was that I felt like it's a broad nib and it didn't write broad it brought it wrote more like a fine nib so I thought oh bummer you know um, that's not going to be a happy thing for me and I don't have very many number five nibs so initially let's see we'll go backwards and I'll show you how it looked to begin oh that's while I was smoothing the nib but I get ahead of myself when I first inked it up and and was uh, putting it in here. This is this is what it looked like. Uh, I put Lamy Turquoise, the cartridge. You know, I put it into a cartridge, and uh, it just wasn't quite right. It it didn't feel scratchy per se, but I could tell I wasn't getting the flow that I needed, and it definitely wasn't wasn't a broad flow. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and and clean out the pen. And let's flip forward here and I'll show you. Um, so that was my issue, issue was that the nib line width, I didn't like it. And it wasn't necessarily scratchy, like I said, but I felt like I wasn't, I didn't like it. So um, I knew that it wasn't gonna, <laughs> gonna get used a lot if, it, if that nib stayed on it. So I cleaned it out and I decided to change the ink first because I... I'm not that familiar with Lamy Turquoise, so I couldn't just say, oh, it was the ink. You know, it, it had to be mostly the ink or, you know. So I just went ahead and put in, uh, I plugged that cartridge up with a Great Fountain uh, brass uh, stopper, and I'll link you to those. And then I put in Dimine Aqua Lagoon in a different cartridge, and I still had the same issue. So I decided that I would work on that nib because... I don't have a lot of, uh, I only had one extra number five nib that I was really happy with and I had another uh, pocket pen that I wanted to put it on. So this is what I used to smooth it with. I'm not going to show you what I did because I don't feel myself an expert at this. I always um, refer everybody to uh, uh, Matt at the Pen Habit. He's got a series of three really good uh, videos that show you everything, but I use this little... Uh, stick here it's got a uh, really coarse and then a little bit less coarse and then the really fine micro mesh it's a micro mesh stick and i think it's from anderson um but i will link for you so you'll know because these are handy i like how you've got all three on one thing and then this is the twelve thousand, i think micro mesh from uh, goulet and i still use that too um in addition to this so this is getting kind of beat up but anyway i i when I got done smoothing it, I am now very happy, and my result is that it writes like a medium nib. So that was really, really good because for now, until I buy more um, nibs, you know, which I need, I need a couple of number five nibs in, in broad, I guess, because, or 
maybe a stub and a broad because this comes up repeatedly where I'm I'm having to uh, play uh, musical chairs with nibs so but I'm really happy with this now I'll carry it around in my pocket and it's it's a lot smoother you know it's writing really good we can write right here I think just to um, I just feel like uh, yeah I can just feel the difference and I could th that's the thing about smoothing your own nibs you can as you're writing you're gonna feel which motion or which way it's scratchy and you can just keep working on that and what I my uh, most motion on this one let's see if you can see was like the upstroke like I could feel it and I just ugh. and so I just kept working on that and and then working around and and it just uh just really worked out well so now I feel like this this pen is really it's not even looking like it did before I can see that I it's not uh doing funny things on certain curves and I don't know if that makes sense to you but it probably does jumps over the lazy dog so although I would not, I still would not call this a broad nib, I would, it's, I'm happy with uh, calling it a medium nib. I'm, I'm just super happy with how it is now compared to what it was, so I'll be using it a lot. Okay, so next up, the next pen that I decided to do something about was the Little Gen Hao uh, 85. This is a great pen, but it has an extra fine nib, and I knew going in <laughs> that that might present a challenge for me because I, you know how I am about broad nibs, but I've used quite a few of these Gen Hao hooded nibs uh, on the shark pens, for instance, and I knew that it would be okay, and it was definitely smooth enough. It just wasn't writing good, and let's see, what did we start out with? I had Parker blue black in it and what I did was just go ahead and change it over to Roar and Klinger Casia because I know the ink really well and sure enough that did it that took care of the issue so that was really easy I mean that just uh, oh my gosh that just makes such a difference okay Jen Howe 85 with an extra fine nib this uh, this ink really, uh, in, especially in the beginning of my fountain pen uh, experience, it definitely saved the day many times because I early on realized that, that this ink had whatever qualities it took to help a drier nib. And so I fall back on it still, and I did finally purchase a, a, a bottle of this Roar and Klinger Casia. So let's see. And it doesn't hurt it at all that it shows up so well. It's very readable. <clears throat> and that does not stop me from having an issue about, you know, I need to hold it right. But <laughs> And that can be an eyesight issue. You know, I have to kind of squint to see <laughs> am I holding it correctly. Anyway, that was an easy fix. That was really good. And I had a feeling that would be the case, but... It definitely made all the difference and now I'm, I'm really happy with it and it you know it'll be a note taker it'll be one that'll write on just about anything I, I would think because it's not uh, not a gusher okay so next was probably this next pen was my hardest one um, this or as far as the the fix and what I needed to do this is a Zenzoi pen that's just gorgeous just gorgeous and the only reason it didn't get inked up sooner probably was because it had a fine nib on it and also I had a few pre misconceptions about it I I don't know why um, I think I just saw the nib and thought oh I don't know about this anyway it's a, a cute little cartridge converter pen and it's beautiful um, and I have a lot more to learn about this brand I don't know where they're made even I don't know if they're made in Florida where the company is or if they're made somewhere else I know there's some uh, German parts involved but I just don't know and I think at first I thought it was a Chinese pen which you know me with the Jin Hao X750s and many of the other Jin Hao's I love them so it's not it wasn't that and certainly it's beautiful but I um, 
I, I inked this pen up and I realized it was scratchy. Um, and it may have gotten worse as I went along because initially when I first inked it up, I didn't just freak out. But a couple of days in, I realized, no, there's something wrong going on here. So when you start watching, if you start watching Matt's videos so that you'll be able to work on nibs, the first thing he tells you is you've got to look at it really good with a loop. And uh, this is my lighted one and that super super works really well to do that with. I got it from Goulet. Anyway, I looked at it and the tines were misaligned on this pen. And I thought, oh no, because I don't like the nib to begin with. What am I gonna do, you know? And that's where it came in that I got out my little uh, nib case. Let me get that. <clears throat> okay, so I got out my spare nibs and I have a little section for number five nibs. Uh, I actually found one that was a Caveco nib that had misaligned tines too. So apparently that's something I don't like working on. Anyway, the, the number five nib that came on this pen is now in this thing. So I don't somehow decide to put it on another pen. And I still have a few. Let's see. Well, these are, these are probably Jin Hao fine nibs. Yeah, both of these are Jin Hao. And then this one is a... Fountain Pen Revolution Flex Nib. So there, there they are, and that's where I had to go. But I only had one candidate, and it was a Twisby Broad Nib. So that's what's on there now. And oh boy, did that ever change everything. Um, here we are right here. So my initial issue was the nib was scratchy and very feedbacky, but the more I worked with it, the worse it was. So found out it was it was misaligned uh, tines very slight but still i didn't like the fine nib i hated it it just wasn't putting out enough ink so uh this this really worked so the first thing i did was uh, swap the nib and then uh i changed the ink i guess i thought that the j herban pour se de lune was quite dark and i wanted to see something a little more um a little brighter a little more purple so now it's got amazing diamine, amazing amethyst, and it's going really well. So, and I'm, I'm looking forward to learning a little more about this brand. There isn't a lot out there about it. So I'm just calling it Zenzoi, uh, Rose Gold, and Lavender. In fact, uh, on Amazon, when they sell the pens, they actually list them by color and there aren't a lot of model numbers or anything so and on their own website which I'll link you to it doesn't seem as if it's a case where they name their pens like you know 850 or you know such and such so unless I'm mistaken they're just you know there just aren't that many uh, names for them but I'm really intrigued and I want to learn more about this company they have a bamboo pen that I'm really interested in. But this, you know, this just definitely underlines the fact that if you're happy with the nib, in most cases, uh, assuming that the feed is okay, and it is, it was so neat. I pulled the whole thing out, and I didn't even need anything. Um, I, uh, I was hoping to show you all the, any tool that I did use, and I didn't even need this. This is a lobster uh, band, but I, I decided to just try it with my fingers since this doesn't have those little fins that you might hurt, and I just gripped it, and it came right out. And the, the feed was very thin and interesting inside. It was very strange, different than anything I've seen. So anyway, I don't mean to call it strange like bad or anything, because it isn't. But now look at that. That's just... That's really putting down the ink, and uh, initially it was pretty. It was the J. Arbonne Pour Se de Lune, which is a very nice ink, but it was it was almost looking black, and so I just decided uh, I wanted more more purpley, and I don't know if that'll show up, but it, it is. It, it is more purpley, so. Okay, so no, no tools at all, just using a nib I had in my little crate there. Now I went from... Nah, to oh my gosh this pen is awesome so yeah I mean and if I ever did decide to give it to somebody at least I would know it, it's like a thumbs up it's writing really well because I don't I don't want to visit you know any problems apparently I sprung the times because 
when I started working or misaligned them or whatever, they weren't like bent completely. It was, it was just slight. Um, when I first started writing with it, it wrote okay. So it's very interesting. You never know though what, what you might do <laughs> to a pen by accident. Okay, last but not least is my little Moon Man Mini Wonkai, the clear, which is now uh, between um, Bunga Box Lamont and uh, Sailor Ackaby. It's becoming almost a, its own color there, kind of stained purple, but when I get done with this fill, I'll see what I can do about it. Okay, this was writing just fine. And I had in it, when I showed you, when we did our initial May video, I had in it uh, uh, the fine nib that came on the pen and Sailor Manio Ackaby. And there was nothing wrong with how it was writing, but I, I wasn't happy because I wasn't able to see that ink the way I wanted to. So I am a lazy person. So I sat here staring at the pen thinking, well, I complained. I told everybody I didn't really like how it was writing, but I have a choice. I can either leave it alone or I can pull the nib off, or at least that's what I was thinking. And I thought, I don't want to pull the nib off because I, I like the broad nib, um, had it on a different one. And I just didn't want to mess with it and possibly hurt the feed. But then all of a sudden I remembered, wait a minute, uh, I don't need to do that at all. All I have to do is take one of these and these nib units um, screw in. And yes, you can pull the nib out. Um, it's not an easy thing to do, but it's what I did in order to get the broad nib onto here. So by just pulling the, you know, unscrewing this and swapping them, well, cleaning this, swapping them, voila, it's done. Whoops, that's got a little bit of uh, grease. I got to be careful not to get that on the nib. <clears throat> okay, so lazy or no lazy, <laughs> it's done. And I can reverse that if I get ready to ink this pink one up. Because this one's going to be a lot better as far as, um, well, it has been a lot better. I, I had uh, Roaring Klinger Solferino in this one uh, in the past. And see, even if it did leave a little bit here and there, on the pen, it's not as visible because the finish is, is able to camouflage the ink. So, but I still love these clear demonstrators. I just feel like I'm going to need another one because I'm ruining this one, but hopefully not. Ho uh, I keep rinsing it and cleaning it, but I probably need an ultrasonic cleaner or a little pen flush or something. I don't know. Anyway, this is now awesome too. Um, go ahead and write with this just for a second. Uh, and no tool whatsoever, I mean, other than this, but you could use a little bit of t-shirt material wadded, you know, you just want to protect the feed, and, or you could use a goulet grip, and if you don't have this, but I just happen to like those, this one's real dirty, but anyway, okay, so where are we here? So this is the fourth pen, and I just love this. Um... If it was a black ink or a gray ink or something for just strictly note taking, I might not be disappointed with the fine nib. But because I know about this ink, how beautiful it is, I really want to be able to see it. <clears throat> and so I'm just really happy about this. Whoops. <laughs> And it really lays down the ink. <clears throat> Whoops, well, that's not very good writing. It's because I'm trying, trying to make everything fit. Yeah, it's very wet. It's really nice. And I love it. I just love it. I don't know if we're going to get... Yeah, lighting is getting a little crazy right now. So that is how it went. So now... I don't have anything else for this month, for May 2021, that is uh, not to my liking. Everything is operational. It's all a go. <laughs> and these four, they went from problem children to uh, cherished uh, <laughs> pens. All right. It's really exciting. So, and really just the loop, the micro mesh, and... I love these things. I mean, the, these lobster bands are just cool. Um, that's it, right? That's all. And of course, my little stash. 
you know, ha having nibs, keeping them, trying to stay ahead of it, which I never do. I never seem to have enough uh, broad nibs, no matter what. So I end up, you know, moving them around and stuff. But, but that's, you know, <laughs> just over time, we do collect things and we don't have to buy every time. So that's wonderful. I hope this was of a little bit of uh, help to somebody. But in the, in the very least, what it does is clear out uh, this part of the video so that when I come back to you, I can just uh, come back the very last day of May and show you what I'm going to be writing with for June. And we'll do the report card, but we won't have to go over all of this, which I think is still interesting. And, and uh, certainly I learned a lot. I've got a lot more to learn about this pen brand, the Zenzoi. And I also wanted to uh, kind of get familiar with this because this Monteverde MVP also has a nib unit that screws in and out. But, you know, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to see how easy it is to pull it. But for right now, I don't need to do that. But I know that I, I didn't like the, the Monteverde broad nib that came on it. It wasn't broad enough. And then this, well, this will be a one-off. I won't be purchasing any more of these because <laughs> this is pretty much typical extra fine nib and, and I'll need to be using, like I could use writer's blood in this, knowing that that's a nice wet ink too that's super flowy. And the Moon Man, they're just, they're a staple in my collection. I love them. I just love these pens. Okay, I think that's it. And then some <laughs> in the kitchen sink. So I'll see you next time. And uh, take care and let me know what problems you're solving. Because I every little piece, every thing that, that I've learned or thought of or watched videos until I could figure it out, has really been valuable and has collected over the five years that I've been back in fountain pens. And it's made it a whole different experience. When I was 16, I was just nothing but frustrated over how my pen would clog up and I didn't really have very many solutions and, and there wasn't internet and my mother was busy writing books so she really couldn't, you know, help me too much, just a little. And so uh, it's nice to share what we know and so I'm going to share links of, for everything that I could think of that might help you, like where to get these things. And, um, uh, and, and the nib tuning series or nib uh, care series by Matt Armstrong so that you can find that. Okay? And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.